Hello, my name is Sebastian Chingotta and today I'll be talking to you about carbon dating. The first thing you need to know is that thanks to radiation from outer space heating our atmosphere, radioactive carbon mixes with oxygen to make carbon dioxide, which is part of the cycle of life. So everything that is alive, like this bug over here, has unstable radioactive isotopes of carbon in it. If you were wondering, stable isotopes are not radioactive and unstable isotopes have extra neutrons making them radioactive. So as soon as a bird or frog or bug or tree or person dies, it stops breathing and eating and has the same amount of unstable carbon-14 isotopes as it did when it was alive. But the second thing you need to know is that unstable radioactive isotopes will slowly decay and eventually become stable by getting rid of those extra neutrons. This decay is known as a radioactive half-life and this radioactive carbon-14 will decay over time to become carbon-12. The carbon decays with a half-life of about 5,715 years. The way to determine the age of something that was once alive like ancient bones is to use an accelerator mass spectrometer to measure how much carbon-14 it actually has left in. Then you use a special formula to give out its age called a differential equation. Did you know that measuring something with the accelerator mass spectrometer means you need to burn it first? To do carbon dating, scientists usually take a very small sample from the thing they want to measure so they can burn it without wrecking the whole thing. And did you know the furthest back in time you can measure with carbon dating is 60,000 years? If you want to measure something older than that, you need to measure the decay of isotopes with longer half-lives, like rubidium. So this is how carbon dating works. I thought I was going to have to buy dinner and a movie, 